Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the gold chart and you can see the reaction after the Trump ordered bombing of Syria warehouse, supposedly gas stockpile, who knows. Uh, I don't believe a word any of these people say. But just to look at the reaction here market-wise, looking at the daily chart, it seems to be kind of a non-event. On the one minute chart, you can see kind of a breakout, a pretty serious breakout of, oh, maybe $15, a, a $20 move total, and it's already pulling back. It may be backing and filling and then trying to make another rise. Uh, the significance of the volume, you can see the volume there, definitely significant on the one minute chart. It'll pull out to the 10 minute chart. Uh, still the biggest we've seen on the 10 minute chart we'll move out to the 30 minute chart and it's still the biggest you can see it appears to be a technical breakout of this uh, sort of pennant formation we'll keep going out to the two hour and you can see on the two hour chart now it's not that uh, significant really uh, if you remember back during the Gulf War if you were watching markets during the Gulf War the reaction that we had in the oil market was an absolutely phenomenal the breakout of the war. Uh, so I would say that this is a very tame reaction in the market. Uh, the crude oil price, you can see here, a little bit more dramatic, um, but really not super significant. Brings us just up above $50. And on the long-term chart, you can see not really significant. Uh, the reaction in the currencies is again muted just like it is in everything else uh, nothing really to speak of and the US dollar index as well nothing to speak of so let's look at silver and uh, it didn't even get through that old high of around 1850 so back to the short-term chart you can see there um, it's having a hard time getting above this price in here. Uh, do the same sort of volume analysis on silver and you can see already just on the five minute chart it's an insignificant amount of volume. So I would have to say that based on the market's reaction to this event that this event was either known beforehand or it's a very insignificant event because we're already seeing the market taper off. Now the reaction in the Bitcoin market has been muted as well. It's kind of been a, a sell-off. You can see that uh, we hit a high of about 1206 on Bitfinex and now we're down to about 1180. Um, not a real big reaction and Bitcoin has been overbought for quite some time. You can see the rally has taken us from 888 on March 25th all the way up across 1200. So Looking at the long-term chart, you can see that uh, Bitcoin may be a little bit overbought, um, but we'll wait and see. Now, uh, I was following Florin Coin very carefully because this this is one of my largest positions, and it was up at one point today. It was up, um, I think, it was nearly 80 percent. I did manage to sell uh, a small amount of what I hold into this top here and that's what I try to do whenever it tops is sell some and then switch it back into Bitcoin uh, that's what I did and then when Bitcoin was above 1200 then I hedged it with the USDT so basically I took about half my position and sold it uh, into that USDT which basically is a dollar equivalent it's really the only way you can hedge Bitcoin unless you're going to hedge it against another cryptocurrency. Uh, but this is actually hedging it against a coin that is linked to the US dollar. So currently I'm hedged. I really don't have a position in, in this trading account. Of course, I'm long Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but I'm kind of hedged at this point. So let's talk a, a little bit about the story and, and the war. I'm going to call this fooled again because I think uh, pretty much now everybody who supported Trump, who at least thought that he was going to be different, has learned today that he's not uh, any different than any of the rest. Uh, and we'll read an article on that. But before we do, I wanted to answer some member questions. Um, 
on the last video I didn't type them in because I was going to address them in a video so let's go ahead and address some of these questions here on the last update the nuclear silver update and this is from R.R. Craven he asked wouldn't that silver be radioactive I think all we got is current supply no reserves a huge game of magical silver chairs exporting and importing where demand is needed in 2007 8 and 9 I bought from Canada's largest silver bullion dealer I went as often as I could I was known there because I bought the most silver which is pathetic because I looked at my income taxes for those years and I was barely making the average Canadian salary but I was the dude buying all the silver for those three years from the largest Canadian bullion dealer so if I was the largest buyer, haha, no one is buying and the demand is still extremely low. The silver price will go nuclear. I love hearing 600 to 1,000, uh, way, to, uh, way too low, at a zero. Now when I go to the coin shop, I still, people, still see, see people selling silver for gold. I don't know what the SDR is, but it's definitely a wrong side of that trade. So some interesting points here uh, as far as that silver being reactive. I don't even know if that that story is true and I and as far as the radioactivity there uh, I don't remember the guy's name but there was a professor who uh, toured around the country I don't know if you've seen those videos they're very interesting but he would actually eat radioactive material to try to prove that it was not harmful and that they were lying about it uh, you might be able to find those videos on YouTube if I find him I'll uh, link them in the comments. So I, my mind is, I'm undecided as to this. All I know is that those videos are fake. I don't know why they faked them. Uh, I suspect the reason why they faked them is because they're faking this entire thing. There's going to be some people that disagree, and we'll uh, talk about that when we get down to those comments. Now, as far as this issue about being the largest buyer and uh, demand being extremely low, that's both bearish and bullish. I mean, it's bearish in the sense that uh, people are still under unbelievable mind control, that they don't understand what an undervalued asset silver is. And that's bearish because it's going to take people to understand for the price to go up. People are actually going to have to buy it. And that's their biggest weapon is mind control. They've used manipulation of the markets and propaganda to prevent people from seeing their interest in buying silver. At the same time, uh, if the participation is so tiny uh, that uh, at some point there is significant participation, then yes, that's correct. The price will go nuclear. We're still waiting for the public to wake up. Infused writes, I talked to a close relative that worked at Oak Ridge Laboratories during the Manhattan Project years. He was well aware of the tremendous demand for silver used in the project. He never saw pallets of silver, but it was well known that vast amounts of silver were used in the project. Also, relative knew of people that were involved in hydrogen bomb test testing in the Pacific and scientists involved with examining the effects of nuclear bomb tests. Radioactive particles have been found in tissues of animals performing tests. That's how scientists knew the tests were being performed. I enjoyed the presentation, but I don't think the phony moon missions are on the same level as the nuclear tests. Interesting. A lot of people wouldn't agree they were phony moon missions. Uh, the videos in the moon missions are as fake as the videos in those nuclear tests. I don't know why they created fake videos, but they definitely did. Uh, if you've watched Eric Dubay's uh, very good video debunking the nuclear uh, weapons scam, uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about how they stack dynamite. There's actually videos of them stacking dynamite. And if you stack uh, tons of dynamite in one place and blow it up, uh, you can get a tremendous uh, bomb effect. And there's no way that the people, any of the soldiers watching that can know uh, what type of bomb that is. They're just told to cover their eyes and then look, and then uh, you see them marching toward it. So that's not convincing for me. Uh, Silver Boost says, I can tell you exactly why Litecoin had a boost. In Bitcoin, you have a split community, the Bitcoin Unlimited side and the Bitcoin Core side. Bitcoin Core wanted to implement SegWit, which is technology, that means segregated witness, which is a technology that will bring revolutionary changes to Bitcoin. But in this battle, SegWit won't be implemented in the close future. Now Litecoin wants to implement SegWit. SegWit will be activated when 75% of the miners support it. In the last weeks, the support seemed uh, to cap it, cap it 20%. Uh, 
a few hours ago the support for SegWit jumped to 60% so we'll be close to 75% and SegWit will activate. When this happens Litecoin can do what it's best at. I can be the test net for Bitcoin and will benefit for that reason. When Litecoin will activate SegWit this will also have an effect on the Bitcoin battle when we see that SegWit holds the promises. More and more people will support Bitcoin Core SegWit and not support Bitcoin Unlimited greeting Silver Boost. Uh, I don't know that much about segregated witness for Litecoin, but if it's true that the support for that has increased tremendously, that very well could be the explanation for the rise. Uh, I think the next one is a, a link that he gives here for where we are with seg segregated witness and Litecoin, and I think that the last that we read here is uh, the support is 69%. At this one point, it's showing 70.6%. So. Thanks for that information. Very interesting. I'll be watching Litecoin going forward. I did short Litecoin at a spike high recently and made a little bit, but got out of that trade really fast. Uh, Litecoin could really go fast if this happens. I'm a freedom fighter, says thanks, BJF. Awesome update. Which altcoins are you in for the long run? Are you still in spots? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of spots. Spots was one of my tests, and it happened to be delisted, so it's pretty much a dead coin at this point. Um, maybe only a thousand dollars worth of coins. Uh, I think the whole market cap is like maybe two or three thousand. So uh, until it's it is trading on one tiny exchange. I think it's Yobit, but there's no volume. So uh, that's just one of those ones that uh, you have to write down as a loser. My biggest position is in Florin coin. I have some other coins, but definitely my biggest position is in that coin. I trade in and out of that coin. I take profits from that coin and put it into other coins. Uh, basically, when that coin is in the three and four hundreds, I buy it. When it goes up to above a thousand, I sell it and back and forth, but I always keep a core position. Uh, Nick Roth, uh, BGF, it does follow form to surmise that nuclear bombs are fake. It sure wouldn't surprise me. Infuse makes some points that led me to this thought. We've been taught that nuclear reactors can power subs, sh uh, ships, subs, generate electricity, etc. The half-life of nuclear waste is half a trillion years, blah, blah, blah. So it seems you can make a hell of a bomb out of that material. On the other hand, there's meltdowns at Fukushima supposedly poisoning the entire Pacific Ocean while they're droning on about global warming being the biggest threat to mankind. So which is it? It sure looks like another massive psyop to me. Yes, it does. It looks like a massive psyop to me. I can't tell you absolutely. Uh, I don't believe Fukushima was real. I don't believe that it was what they said it was. And uh, I think it was probably a big hoax. Uh, I don't believe in this millions of years nonsense. Uh, I don't believe any of the carbon dating, radioactive dating, any of that stuff. I think that if you look at the creation scientists like Ken Ham and Kent Hovind, they've thoroughly discredited their uh, whole... Uh, radioactive dating and all of those techniques. It's just pure speculation. And of course, it's based on their uh, belief that the universe is billions and billions of years old, which is not scientific. There's no basis for saying that. In fact, the only reason why they said that is because of the um, Copernican revolution and the type of uh, heliocentric system that we have. They had to deduce billions and billions of years to explain the billions of light years that the stars are away from us, and uh, they're really not. And uh, they also needed those billions of years to have their fake theory of evolution have any credibility at all. And uh, again, I, I don't put any credibility in heliocentrism, don't believe it, and I don't put any credibility in evolution either. Don't believe either one of them. Nick Roth, as an aside, just listen to Jay Dyer podcast. He mentioned the A-bomb footage was filmed at Wonderland Studios in Laurel Canyon. He claimed it was documented. He's very thorough, so I don't doubt it. Wouldn't surprise me a bit. I've heard anecdotal stories about uh, some film studios that were actually run by NASA and the military that actually at one point were putting out more movies, more um, uh, film being filmed and put out by these government studios uh, than Hollywood uh, at certain points in time in the past. If you remember those newsreel footage, those government U.S. government propaganda newsreel footages that used to show in the movie theaters, um, 
the government has been in the propaganda business, uh, pr movie propaganda for quite some time. And uh, Gary Franklin writes, recently declassified nuclear tests. If you click on that video, it shows some supposed new video, but really the, the video is all just a bunch of talking, except for one little clip of uh, uh, some kind of mushroom cloud, which again is just as suspicious and worthless as the video that we've seen. So uh, I'm not convinced this stuff is real. And the reason why is because uh, it's big business. War is big business. We're seeing that again here. This is an article from a Greek reporter. It's called, It's the Gas Pipelines Stupid. And let me just say that if anybody believes that the reason why these sovereign nations, or maybe not so sovereign, but these very powerful, wealthy nations of the world declare war on each other and have acts of military aggression is because of concern for children, because some children were gassed, then you're so gullible that there's nothing I can say to you. Countries go to war for economic reasons and sometimes political reasons, occasionally religious reasons, reasons which are actually political reasons i.e. the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. But the main reasons are economic and political and uh, things about children being gassed and things about uh, chemical weapons and uh, Saddam Hussein harming his own people. These are just uh, excuses given for the mainstream media to peddle to the masses because they have to have some type of horror, horrible event happen to justify uh, engaging in a military strike. And that's exactly what has just happened. Uh, and I think those people who supported Trump, uh, it's pretty clear that they were fooled again. So here's the explanation. It's not over yet. The cherries are on the cake. The cherries on the cake are two massive pipelines. They both serve opposing strategic interests. A, the proposed Iran-Iraq Syria pipeline running from Iran's South Pars gas fields cuts through Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon to reach the Syrian coast and supply European customers directly from Syria's terminals. It bypasses Turkey altogether. This route has the support and protection of Russia, who also has a naval military base at Syria's Tardis. And option B is the proposed Qatar Turkey pipeline, which starts Iranian Qatari gas fields, gas fields and cuts across Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Syria towards Turkey to connect with Nabucco pipeline in Turkey to supply the Turkish and European markets. The EU and USA prefer to support this route. But to everyone's dismay, President Assad refuses to allow the pipeline to pass through Syrian territory. Under that scenario, it has become critical to remove Assad and replace him with the Syrian Muslim Brotherhood as a new friendly government. Meanwhile, Western powers provide military support to warring factions, while the media continues to demonize Assad, just like they did with Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi. The results of those failed policies are in plain view for everyone to see and decide. And so for me, I'm about 99.9% .9 convinced that uh, we've been fooled again. Donald Trump is just a puppet of the same people who brought us the Gulf War, the one that he criticized, but they're following the exact same pattern. They're creating a false flag. Uh, the horror of the children being harmed. They're blaming it on the person they want to overthrow, and they're starting a war, just as they always have. We've been fooled again, and I'll talk to you next time.